All right, so big words here. We're looking at disproving statements. All right, so first one we need to talk about is a universal quantification. So a universal quantification claims that property holds true for all members of a given set. For example, for all natural numbers, we have 2n is greater than n plus 1. There is another thing called a existential quantification. It claims that property holds true for at least one member of a given set. We say there exists at least one case where it's true. For example, there exists an integer m such that m squared equals 25. So there is an integer, at least one integer or just one integer, where that would be true. And obviously that integer is 5. So we only need one thing for an existential quantification to be true. A universal quantification says it works for all things. So the phrases that we really want to hone in on here are for all and there exists. Let's um, rewrite these statements using for all and there exists. Some real numbers are irrational. So a new way to write that would be there exists some x in the real numbers such that x is irrational. Same statement, just using some more mathsy language with there exists and for all. Let's look at the other one. Every integer that is divisible by 4 is also divisible by 2. For all m that are integers, if m is divisible by 4, then m is divisible by 2. So important distinction here between there exists and for all. Now of these two, for all is a really strong statement. It's saying every single thing in this set follows this particular rule. The cool thing about that is that if you can prove that there is a single version of that where it doesn't work, then you've disproven that theory. So if you would like, this is the, the wordy bit, to negate a statement involving a quantifier, we interchange for all with there exists and then negate the rest of the statement. All right, let's look at an example, make more sense then. All right, so here we have, for all natural numbers n, we have 2n is greater than or equal to n plus one. Now, how could we disprove that statement? The easiest way to disprove it is to replace for all with there exists, a natural number n, and then write the opposite of that statement, such that 2n is less than n plus one. So we just need to find something that breaks that. Now, what about this second statement? There exists an integer m such that m squared equals 4 and n cubed equals 8. Uh, now, we're going to swap the there exists and then we're going to write the opposite statement. For all integers m, so we're getting rid of there exists, we're swapping it to for all, we have m squared is not equal to 4 or m cubed is not equal to 8. Um, so we've had to do a couple of things here. We've had to swap there exists for all, uh, and then we've had to change this uh, equal sign to a not equal sign because we're swapping it. But we also have to swap the and to an or. So we're doing the exact opposite of that statement, and we're swapping there exists to for all. Now, there are two symbols for for all and there exists, and you should write those down. Now your syllabus does specifically have these in here. Interestingly, your particular textbook says there are these symbols, but they're so annoying that like we don't use them, but they are in your syllabus. So you should probably try to get used to using for all the upside down A and there exists the back to front E, um, A for all upside down and backwards E exists. And I've spoken about this a few times now, but one way of disproving a universal statement, one which says that it is true for all, is to find just one single counterexample. So to disprove P implies Q, you just need to find one counterexample where that is not true. Very simple example here, disprove the statement for all natural numbers N, the rule N squared minus N plus 11 produces a prime number. Uh, now you go through them, Put, put one into that rule, put two into that rule, put three into that rule, you get prime, 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 not prime. Oh, hello, I've just disproven your, your statement. Ha ha.
Another one here, find a counterexample to disprove the statement for all x and y in real numbers. If x is greater than y, then x squared is greater than y squared. And the way to break this is to use the fact that real numbers are both positive and negative. Make one of them a negative number. You square a negative number, you get this big, large, positive number. Therefore, this statement is not true. I think it would be true if you replaced real numbers with um, positive integers or, or um, positive real numbers. So proving an exist or disproving an existence statement. So if someone says there exists, and then you just need you that's harder because you can't just find one counterexample. You actually have to prove that there doesn't exist something. Uh, so it's more of a direct proof style of a thing, but if someone says there exists, then you have to prove it. No, it doesn't exist. I've exhausted all possible possibilities. It's not possible. So example of that, disprove the statement, there exists n in the natural numbers, such that n squared plus 13n plus 42 is a prime number. So if I put one into that, take my word for it, it's not gonna be a prime number. If I put two into that, take my word for it as well, it's not gonna be a prime number. But this statement says there exists some natural number that I can put into there that will be a prime number. And now we need to disprove it. And we disprove it first by writing the negation. So the negation is going to be changing there exists to for all and then writing the opposite of the statement. So here's the negation. For all n in the natural numbers, the number n squared plus 13n plus 42 is not prime. So now we need to prove that. We need to prove that statement, and therefore we will disprove that statement. Uh, it's actually pretty straightforward. When you factorize n squared plus 13n plus 42, you get two factors, n plus 6 and n plus 7. If you've got two factors, uh, and neither of those factors is equal to 1, obviously, because if I put a number in there and I put a number in there, I'm not going to get 1, um, then we have a composite number. So it's not prime, proved, or in fact, not proved, disproved. They gave us a statement, we wrote the negation, and then we proved the negation. Therefore, we disproved the original statement. Just a final example here, show the following statement to be false. So we're gonna to have to write the negation of it. There exists some real number such that x squared equals negative one. Swap there exists to for all, and then write the opposite of that. For all real numbers, x squared is not equal to negative one. Uh, x squared is positive for all real numbers. X squared is greater than zero. Therefore, X squared is not equal to negative one. The negation is true. All right, that's disproving statements. Um, and then you also learned a little bit about those quantifiers, which was for all and there exists.